Femoral traction pin placement Femoral traction pin placement Abstract This is a concise guide for the placement of femoral and tibial traction pins used in the setting of orthopedic trauma. This chapter includes indications, contraindications, and stepwise operative techniques. It also provides positioning, instrumentation, and helpful tips for pin insertion. Indications Temporary or definitive management of pelvic, acetabulum, or femoral fracture. Preoperative soft tissue relaxation by restoring limb L length and providing provisional stability prior to reconstruction. Operative aid for fracture reduction in treatment of femoral or acetabulum trauma. Contraindications. 1. Inadequate soft tissue envelope. 2. Active infection at desired pin site. 3. Significant local wound contamination. 4. Polyligamentous knee injury or tibia fracture. Avoid tibial traction. Preoperative preparation. 1. If necessary, stabilize patient per ATLS protocols. 2. Obtain biplanar radiographs to allow for identification and classification of skeletal injuries. 3. 3. Perform and document preoperative neurovascular and soft tissue examination. Special instruments, position, and anesthesia. 1. A minor surgical tray with sterile towels. Scalpel, fully or centrally threaded Steinman's pin, power drill, bolt cutter, Steinman's pin holder or K wire bow, and weights for traction are required. 2. Fluoroscopy will allow for marking of the knee joint axis and may be helpful in minimizing the risk of facile injury in children. 3. Place patient. Use a bump under the knee to allow for slight flexion. This will aid in ease of pin placement and prevent interference from contralateral limb. 5. The procedure is generally performed under local anesthetic. Inject anesthetic, usually lidocaine 1%, into subcutaneous and subperiosteal tissues on medial and lateral sides of extremity at desired pin location. Tips and pearls 1. Do not be distracted by the obvious injury. Be sure to fully assess entire skeletal system. 2. If the skeletal injury allows, assess ligamentous stability of knee prior to placement of a tibial traction pin. 3. The pin must be placed orthogonal to the long axis of the limb in all three planes. This is especially important if traction is to be used for maintenance of alignment over an extended period of time. 4. In older patients with osteopenic bone, Consider placing pins in a more diaphysal location to prevent cutout and improve fixation. 5. If subsequent treatment with a femoral intramedullary nail is anticipated, femoral traction pins should be placed anterior in the femur to allow for nail passage. Alternatively, use tibial traction. 6. The ends of the Steinman pin should be trimmed with a bolt cutter and cap to avoid inadvertent injury to contralateral limb or healthcare personnel. What to avoid 1. Avoid tension of the skin at the pin insertion site. Make adequate incisions. 2. Minimize injury to soft tissues and or neurovascular structures by bluntly dissecting down to bone. 3. Mark knee axis and avoid oblique pin placement in any plane. 4. Avoid facile injury in children. 5. Avoid intra-articular pin insertion as this can lead to prolonged drainage and increases the risk of septic arthritis. 6. Avoid injury to superficial femoral artery in the adductor canal. Insert a femoral traction pin from medial to lateral. 7. Avoid injury to common perineal nerve. Insert a tibial traction pin from lateral to medial. Postoperative care issues. 1. Wrap Vaseline gauze around pin sites followed by a rolled cotton dressing to protect the skin. Make sure this protection includes the area where the traction bow will rest to avoid pressure necrosis. 2. Place limb in the appropriate form of skeletal traction with a suitable hanging weight based on the patient and the nature of the skeletal injury. 3. After pin insertion, take radiographs to assess pin orientation and fracture alignment. 4. Document postoperative neurovascular status. Operative technique. Femoral traction pin. 
1. Place patient supine on stretcher or operating room table. 2. Place a bump under the knee. The degree of knee flexion should correlate with the amount of flexion anticipated for treatment. 3. If available, consider using portable fluoroscopy to mark a line parallel to knee joint. This aids orientation and can help minimize facile injury. 4. Prepare the leg with antiseptic solution and drape relevant area with sterile towels. 5. Inject local anesthetic into subcutaneous and subperiosteal tissue on medial and lateral aspects of leg at desired pin site, figures. 6. Make a vertical stab incision on the medial side of the leg approximately 1 to 2 finger breadths above superior pole of the patella at the adductor tubercle, figure. 7. Bluntly dissect to medial femoral cortex using a hemostat. 8. Place a large threaded Steinman pin, 3 16 inch for adults or 3 30 seconds inch for children, using a Jacobs chuck and power drill through a soft tissue protection sleeve, figure. 9. Palpate the pin as it exits the far lateral cortex. Make a stab incision to allow final pin passage through the skin. 10. Apply Vaseline dressing followed by rolled cotton wrap.